Okay, this video is a quick rundown on how to do a linear regression in the program JASP. First things first, let's get our data. I'm using a shortened version of a sample data set. In this example, I'm looking at the association between verbal skills and, skills and working memory in school children and reading abilities. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that all of your variables are labeled correctly. If you can see the little symbols next to the different variable titles, you can see that uh, reading and working memory are both listed at scale. However, verbal and math are both listed as categorical variables, which is incorrect. So the first step is to change that. All you have to do is click on it and then click on the little scale. All right, we should now be all set and ready to go. To run a regression on this data, click on the button that says Regression, then Linear Regression. This brings you to a window with all your regression options. Your list of variables is on the left, and you simply select them and hit a button in the middle to transfer it to the appropriate box. Since we are wanting to measure reading skills as predicted by math and verbal skills and working memory, reading will go in the dependent box, and the others will go under covariates. You can see we are already getting data over on the output side in nice little APA approved tables. JASP's automatic setting is to give you everything at once, which is great if you wanted a simultaneous multiple linear regression. Not so much if you wanted to do a hierarchical one, though. So what are our options if we want a hierarchical regression in JASP? Well, after poking around JASP for a bit, I've concluded that you have two options. If you look where it says method, change it from enter to backward. The other two really don't like my data and won't do anything except give me a lot of zeros. Now you will see a comparison of four models, with the top one including all three variables, the second including a two, the next one one, and the bottom excluding predictors. A downside to the way JASP does it is that you can't block predictors or put them in a specific order. The other way to do it is to simply run it one at a time and save the tables. That option is a little bit more tedious, but it gives you better control. For instance, if I want to see how verbal and working memory affect it, I can just remove math. And here I have just a single model for what those two do. I can copy the table and then save it for later. If I wanted to do verbal and math instead, I could simply switch it out. And I could also copy that table. Granted, this particular data set isn't all that complicated, so the other method would probably work just fine, since I really would want to see just all of them together anyway. However, if I had a bunch of variables that I was wanting to compare, in different blocks. This might be the better option in the long run. Of course, if you're already working on it, or have a lot of variables that you will be using but don't want to use all at once, a simpler way of including or excluding it from a model would be under the button Model, where you can include which ones you want to display in the current table by either just selecting one or any of them and hitting the little arrow button to either include it or exclude it. This also goes for if you're under the backward setting. You can remove a given variable and it'll take it out of the table and out of the calculations. There are a number of other options that you can also use minimizing that so that we can see things more clearly, we can now go over to the statistics button 
If you click under Statistics, you are given the option of Regression Coefficient Estimates, Confidence Intervals, and Descriptive Statistics, which is very useful if you're wanting to get all of your information in one place. As you can see, there's a lot more options uh, available both in the statistics uh, drop-down menu, the options drop-down menu, and the assumption checks drop-down menu. But that's a little bit past uh, what this basic introduction is for. So instead, let's jump over to reading and interpreting the tables. The table on top gives our descriptive uh, statistics. The sample size n, the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error. Since they are on different scales, we can't tell a lot just by these. So we go on into the next table and see the model summary. The first one, as I said before, is the total of both predictors. The regression coefficient uh, r squared for both is uh, 0 0.049 and for verbal is 0 0.030, which I told by checking and removing one at a time to see what it did to it. Otherwise, it's hard to tell which one it is. That's one of the unfortunate things about the way that JASP does this. Anyway, by subtracting 0 0.030 from 0 0.049, you get a total of 0 0.019, which we can assign to math. That means that the verbal scores account for more of the variance than the math scores do. Considering that we're talking about reading and verbal skills, it makes a lot of sense. So now we know which one is larger than the other, but is it significant? To see that, we can scroll down to see the comparison of the three models. Looking at the right-hand side, we can see that neither of them is p less than 0.05, which means while there is a little bit of a difference, it's not at all significant. One last little thing to check is going to be the individual items. We scroll down to the bottom one, the estimates of coefficients table. We can look at the p-values for each of the variables individually and looking at them, also a whole lot of uh, non-significance. Therefore, about all that you could do with this is go ahead and copy your tables into a Microsoft Office document and write up the best nothing happened report that you could. So there's regression in JASP. It's not quite as nice as the SPSS in certain ways, and it also doesn't have nearly the flexibility that R does. But all things considered, it is still pretty easy to use. It's very streamlined, and it's very quick and efficient. And compared to SPSS, the price is right, coming in at zero dollars. And compared to R, you don't have to memorize any programming code, so both sides it's a plus. It's going to have its own little niche in the market. So, thanks for watching my video on how to do regression in JASP.